What is up everybody? We are back on episode two of the F100 build, AKA Loner. This is a 1964 Ford F100 short bed. Today, we are finally back on the project. We are doing the first major fab stuff to it. Getting the rest of the shocks and accessories pulled off and we're gonna be installing a custom eight piece C notch. This is a pretty big notch. It's gonna be able to clear a 29 inch tall tire. But other than that, we're gonna cover all the details in today's video. So let's jump right into it. Before we get started figuring out our notch height and how we're gonna have it shaped and all that fun stuff, we have to get our frame level. You guys probably heard this time and time again, but I'm still gonna stress it more. Take that first half of a day and get everything nice and level, especially with a frame like this, it's C-channel and it has twists. So I had to get some of the twist out of this frame. So we got all the twist out. We are supporting majority of the frame from the very back to the firewall with six jack stands. My main thing I like to do is, we're not working with a frame table or anything like that, so I like to make sure every jack stand is seeing some sort of weight from the frame. So you can't wiggle the jack stand or anything like that. And then that's a good reference point for when we're actually cutting out maybe the notch or anything else. I like to kind of come back through and see if that jack stand hasn't wiggled out or anything like that. Because if all of a sudden you have a jack stand that has no weight on it anymore, there could be a chance that you are warping the frame a little bit and we don't want that happening. So that's kind of like a good little safety thing to kind of rely back on as you're, you're putting your notch in, cutting it out. Uh, if you start feeling a jack that's getting a little light with the weight, then uh, you may want to pay attention to that. You see I got some bushing ends here front and back because of how this frame is shaped it's hard to get a true level this reading but I know that this point and this point should be the same height so we got that leveled out we got our side to side leveled out and we are looking really good we're within uh, 16th of an inch or so give or take all around and that should be plenty fine also besides doing this I did take a measurement off the lowermost portion of the frame this frame has just a tiny little spot which is gonna be the true lay spot. Um, so I measured off that, that's consistently measuring about 16 and a quarter inches from the ground. So that's gonna be our main measurement point. We're now looking at the side profile of our frame. We're looking just above the axle and we need to figure out how big of a notch we need to lay our truck out. Now I made a more in-depth video on this earlier in the year. I will leave a link up in the corner but we're gonna cover it right here, right now, a real life scenario. We know the lowest most part of the frame on this truck is 16 and a quarter inches currently off the ground. We know that we want to eventually run a 29 inch tall tire. It's important to take the maximum size tire you're gonna to need to lay in the future if you plan to increase wheel and tire size. We're gonna take the 29 inches divided by two, which is 14.5 inches. Now we're gonna measure our axle tube size. In this case, it's about three inches. We're gonna divide that by two as well. That's gonna give us a 16 inch measurement on which we would need the clearance to lay out on a 29 inch tall tire because the axle is gonna be the point of which hitting the notch. Since the frame's not on the ground, we're gonna to have to take our lower frame measurement of 16 and a quarter and add it to the 16 inches. And that is gonna tell us that we need a 32 and a quarter inch tall notch to the bottom side of the notch. So pretty big notch to lay out on a 29 on this frame, but I don't wanna stop there because that's perfect 
and the axle would probably bump up into the frame depending on how level the ground is and everything else. So we want to add a little bit to that. So in this case, we're going to add it up to an even 33 inches from the bottommost part of the frame to the ground point. That'll give us a little bit of breathing room so we're not slamming into the bottom of the notch because that would not be a fun thing to do. Before we started getting the notch in, we center marked our frame where the center of the axle is. I'm doing something a little bit different that I've never tried before, but I think it's going to be fairly successful. It's actually moving the notch forward than what your center mark is at mid-travel. Basically what I'm getting down to is your suspension travels on an arc, so it's not going perfectly straight up and down. Uh, more often than not, most people notch their rig at like mid-travel. When they lay out, depending on how their links are set up, their axle is going to be actually further forward in the frame. Now, not super crucial, although with a notch like I did here, uh, it is actually a little bit more crucial because we want to make sure that we're right in the center as far as aesthetics and we don't want to bump into the frame. With your typical rectangular style C-notch, uh, there's room in the notch so you don't have to be super precise. But it's still a bit of an eyesore when the axle is a little bit further forward in the notch itself. I've been learning Fusion 360 and been playing around with some link geometries on what I'm going to be doing on this truck. I'm not sure how to pronounce this right. Uh, the Sagnita? Sagnatia? <laughs> However you say it, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen. The suspension I'm doing right now has got about 7 sixteenths from full bump to full droop. At middle height, it's right where it needs to be. When it comes up, it's gonna be about 7 sixteenths of an inch forward in the notch. And then when it comes all the way down, it's gonna be 7 sixteenths forward down here. I moved this notch about 7 sixteenths of an inch forward than what my center line is where mid travel is going to be so hopefully when the suspension arcs up into the frame rail our axle is going to be really close to being centered up in this notch 
I think it's gonna work out really well. I just wanted to point that out because more often than not, your axle is gonna travel up and forward into your frame rail. Once we got the outsides in, level with each other, distance wise to the front, uh, these were kind of hard to try to get askew because there's no flat portion on top. So I drew some perpendicular lines to go off of. We got it really close. And then it makes the inside really easy. Clamped on the bottom side of the frame, a crossbar. And that crossbar sits right where my notch was sitting. So I could put the inside notches right on top of those crossbars. Put my long level across, make sure my level's hitting all pieces of the notch forward and backward and on the very top so we're looking really good uh, as far as the notch springing in and out right now you know I can squeeze it in I can move it around with my hand uh, that's nothing to worry about we got it close so once we start to cap this and add cross members we can make sure it's dialed in and nice and square to the world There we go, we got the bottom caps clamped into place, got them tacked up. I didn't record it, but uh, the whole notch is welded. We welded the whole top side of the notch before cutting out the frame portion, made up our caps, threw our caps up in there, clamped them, tacked them, made sure they were all lined up nice and straight, came back through, welded all the bottom side. So now that the notches are pretty much fully welded, just besides the under parts, uh, I know eventually this frame's gonna get flipped over, so I'm just gonna save that welding until then. I wanted to make one more note, because uh, I think a lot of people overlook this, uh, and that is to put some over your glass. Right here, we got a fiberglass blanket over the back glass. You can also get like special 3M, uh, like spark tape and other kinds of things. Some people just do cardboard. You will notice once you're finished doing all your shit, you got your truck all nice and bagged and shit, and you're gonna go clean it for the show, you're gonna wipe that back window, it's gonna catch your towel because all the little sparks from grinding and welding burnt into the actual glass and they're not coming out. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm really excited to finally start working on this thing. Uh, episode one was seven months ago. 
I, I can't believe how much time just flies by. Nonetheless, this is the first major fab work done on the truck. We have a bunch of bushing stuff ordered. I'm gonna have to source tubing to build the links. Other than that, in the next episode, we're gonna be removing the axle, the lace springs, cleaning up more of the frame, and starting to figure out where we're gonna be putting our link tabs, cross members, and really start getting that dialed in. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and we will see you guys in the next video. Keep on trucking. Peace.